Before we get started with today's video, y'all, if you guys are looking to buy a godlike NBA 2K19 account, make sure you guys hit up legit accounts, 100% legit. The link will be in the description. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, aka WHD, back in the building with yet another banger. And in today's video, we got an NBA 2K20 news video. And I'm about to bring you guys everything we know about NBA 2K20 after the NBA 2K20 Community Day. Now, if you guys want more videos like this, make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel so we can reach that 10,000 subscribers. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so you see every time I upload another banger like this one. And every single time I'm live streaming on YouTube. Now, if you guys don't know what the NBA 2K Community Day is, it's basically where they bring all your favorite streamers and popular YouTubers into one location this year being LA and they let these guys test out the game and they get to leak some stuff about the game and we heard a lot of stuff about the new NBA 2K20 today so I'm about to bring you everything we know after the NBA 2K20 community day so let's just hop straight into it we're gonna go over a lot of things um today we're gonna be going over um just a, a little random stuff in the beginning but then we're gonna start diving deep and what I mean by diving deep is going to into dribbling, um, builds, badges, gameplay, the ta the new takeover system, all that. So let's go ahead and start now. So the amount of VC uh, was exposed by iPod King Carter, and he says that day one it will cost you about 185,000 VC to upgrade your player to 85 overall. Now that was about the same in NBA 2K19. So now we know that the in-game currency value. It's just about the same, so nothing different. We don't know if the prices change. I doubt it. But, you know, that's kind of interesting to see right there. So you're going to have to buy about 200,000 BC, which I think is like $20. I'm not 100% sure, to upgrade your player day one. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then we had something else. You know, we have delaying was a big problem this year in events, etc. And people were confused why everyone's talking about these builds and stuff when, you know delaying is a huge problem it makes the game unplayable and thank god annoying tv a popular twitch streamer brought that out immediately to the 2k devs and they are aware of it so we'll see what happens hopefully delaying is not an nba 2k20 but they are aware of it so that is good to know next up sub the gamer said that the micro cutscenes are insane he basically said i can't imagine how much work production and planning was taken into consideration so fire now usually we like to skip our cutscenes we don't like them but hey, I mean, Sub the Gamer's been playing my crew for years on top of years on top of years. And if he thinks they're that good, then they must be really good. I don't know if I'm going to watch them. But hey, maybe, you know, they're pretty fire this year. I don't know. We'll see. And another thing, uh, Craig said that there's going to be a micro trailer coming this Monday. So watch out for that. Ronnie2k also exposed that there is, um, you don't need VC for the demo this Wednesday. So it's basically just a bunch of testing. I don't know if we're actually going to be able to create a player maybe just testing and creating players but they're they won't go through to the actual game i don't know how that's going to work if there's just no vc but we'll see come next week and then troy dan for the final random tweet said unfortunately you cannot put wnba teams against the nba teams so this kind of exposes the my part too so i don't think you're gonna be able to make a wnba player either unfortunately but you know i don't think a lot of people were actually expecting that to happen anyways so we're gonna go into the first section of the 2k20 news that we heard today and it's gonna be the build section so this all this news i'm about to tell you is about straight about builds right so the first thing we heard is from los polos tv a popular twitch streamer and he said based on how many badges and new badges there are everything you can customize there's honestly probably hundreds of different builds that are possible i don't think any two people could make the exact same build so this is crazy okay so basically what we're hearing is that there's not just single archetypes double archetypes there's like triple you could add so many different variables in to your archetype and there's not really any set archetypes which we'll go more into but there's just millions of possibilities hundreds of builds um and it's just going to be very versatile this year is basically what he's saying and then uh, annoying tv says guaranteed you're going to take an hour or two building your player it's too much information to take in so there's basically you know there's just a lot of badges a lot of options and just too many things to test you know what i'm saying so that's what 
and no one's getting that there. He also said, God honest truth, I wouldn't replicate any YouTuber's build. When it comes to my players, the builds are so unique, it's hard to re replicate and crazy. Don't get it twisted, though I'm still clickbaiting. Well, guys, I mean, he's basically just replicating what Lo said. There's just too many options. So that just makes me think that I'm going to have to make a lot of build videos, which is exactly what I was planning on doing anyways. But he also says, guards, anything after 6'5 is disgusting. Hashtag NBA 2 a 20 in a bad way. So basically, he's saying if you make a guard that's taller than 6'5, it ain't looking good. Now, he actually played the game under all-star difficulty. But there are badges that we're going to talk about that do make these taller players better. better. And in my opinion, the taller, the better this year. So I don't really agree with this tweet, but hey, this is what he said he did play the game. Davis said guards are significantly faster than centers in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, which is kind of good because, you know, they, 2K always favors height. And if a guard is faster, you know, I guess this should be the case. So if a set, you know, setting screens in park might be a big thing this year because if they, you get that switch matchup, it's a GG. The guard taking you one-on-one -on -one and it's over from there. So I kind of like this. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Shakedown says there are different body shapes when making your my player to find solid um, builds slight compact it's all cosmetic and will have no effect on strength speed etc just collisions to make you a flatter player so I guess he said it could affect collisions but this is all just uh, the looks of your player they had this in 16 which I don't know why they took it out so I guess they're bringing it back to 2k20 and they're giving you more options so it's just another small thing that's kind of a cool ad for 2k20 Another thing Hollywood said, making the sim build as someone else is going to be very hard. The amount that you can customize is uncomparable to other 2K. So once again, they're completely revamping the My Player archetype system, uh, which was said by a lot of other people. IKC dropped a huge bomb and said pure, pure point forwards are gone. Now, there was a dev that made a tweet under this saying something along i can't remember what he exactly said but it kind of seemed like he was saying that ikc was not telling the truth and he was mistaken but he actually isn't mistaken point forwards are gone so i you know obviously point forwards could be six eight or taller but you know usually a small forward can get up to six ten so i think that's what they're getting at is you can't really make a six nine or six ten playmaker again so they'll probably be six eight six seven playmakers which will be the new pure point forwards but yeah pure point forwards playmakers basically at the small forward position are gone Craig said a pie chart will most likely be showing what your build leans to more. If it's either three point, athleticism, etc. So there were kind of pictures of this, but they were very blurry. But basically, there's like a pie chart where like there's there's different kind of archetypes around it, like athletic, you know, playmaking, shooting, uh, inside scoring, and all that stuff. And it kind of just like gives you percentages and like ways towards what your kind of build is, so you can get an idea of what he can do, right? Another thing he said is apparently you can test your build at any overall before confirming him to make sure you're comfortable with him, which is crazy. Troy Dan also said good thing about that 2K20 demo is you can try out every build with every badge at every level in my career type games. So not only can you test your build out in the my, in the my court, but you can test it out in a quick match or something. And then Hollywood said, your grind for upgrade points this year, not cap breakers. And bad stuff is unlocked in the same manner. So it's not caps, it's points. So it's kind of like 15 and 16 where you had to upgrade, you know, like levels. And then you could upgrade your player. It's going to be more like that this year, which I really like. And going back to, you know, testing everything, they're literally going to let you... Let's say you want to make like a playmaking sharp, even though that's not probably not going to be like a type of build, like maybe like a playmaking shot sharp or something. And you can test it at any overall 60 through 99 overall. You can test it with any badges, no badges, all the badges. You can test it with or without takeover, takeover sharp shot, takeover. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's in quick match or my course. So you're not, it's going to be hard to make a mistake. At the same time, it's going to be easy to make a mistake with all the options there are. But anyways, let's go straight into the next session. That's everything we heard about builds. Um, now let's go into badges. Now, there's a couple new badges, you know, a couple new things to it. So the first thing we heard from Annoying TV was choose extremely wisely on your badges. Trust me. So not only does this like change, maybe you could change what build you're going to make, but 
there's optional badges so like you could almost select badges is what he's saying here and badges are also very important gameplay wise so you know maybe not look as much as the attributes but the badges are going to be very important and can change your player completely hollywood said quick draw is a new badge speeds up the release of old jump shots including post fadeaways all heights can get this badge so when you guys were talking about your old oh, stretches are dead stretches are dead you're telling me a seven foot three stretch can get this badge and his jump shot is gonna be faster i don't know if the badge will like make it the same speed for everybody or like oh if i'm six five and i make my jump shot faster is it gonna be the same amount more faster than a stretches jump shot you know what i'm saying like is it gonna make it 20 percent faster on every single build you know what i mean i don't know if it'll have the same strength to every position but it, you can get it on any build another thing that was said was during the test you can up apply badges and increase them from bronze to hall of fame depending on your build choices if you're a sharp that can can't dunk try equipping some finisher badges to balance him out more same goes for defense and playmaking so you can really just choose your badges too so if i'm a like a like a pure shooting build like he says and i apply post rise and relentless finisher i could keep that applied if i like it and i can also test it out so there's gonna be a lot of thinking when it comes to making builds and testing gameplay etc etc um craig said you can see the changers badges as well so maybe there you can select 40 badges in the my player builder and you can only have 20 equipped at one time i don't know what he's saying by this but i think that's probably what he's getting at there for shooters there's a new badge called flexible release now i think this is just destroying the game i think this is very um making the skill gap not nearly as wide as it could be but anyways this badge reduces the penalty suffered from mid time the jump shot releases so what he's saying is half bars shooting a half bar a badge called green machine another one called steady shooter i don't know why they would add this bro like you're giving players that can't time shots a badge so they don't have to time their shots but uh, it's in the game man i don't know why but it's in the game tons of new badges for dribbling such as handles uh for days unpluckable tight handles stop and go and many others now we don't know what these badges do but i mean as the looks of it unpluckable i don't know if maybe you just can't steal the ball tight handles you know maybe he's dribbling lower to the ground faster too uh, handles for days probably stamina stop and go maybe a hesitation and maybe something out of a rhythm dribble that makes it go faster but we'll see when it comes closer to launch day man another badge that was added was ice and veins and craig is assuming that it's a clutch moments badge i would agree maybe it's like a new way or a new name for clutch performer uh so probably something along those lines you could also pick your badges to the my player builder you're not limited to badges we just talked about that earlier as well you can completely customize your badges in the my player builder when selecting your build post scores aren't going to be the only ones with post related badges so some of you are probably thinking you know about post scores and lockdowns well this is just making post scores worse if a, if other builds can have these post scoring badges then there's no point of being a post score right so yeah that's pretty crazy you could you could really post up with any build this year i guess but anyways that's enough about the badges let's go straight into the dribbling so all my dribble heads out there all those stizos um, all those dribble gods out there, all those G-mans, I'm Davises, all y'all out there know, trying to know about the dribbles. Let's get straight into it. So, the ball control stats needed. So, you need an 86 speed with ball to get tier 3 quick first step. So, a lot of people thought first step could get on any player, but I guess there's tiers to them so i guess you can get first step on you know tier one and two but you have to get the tier three ones you have to have 86 speed with ball and you need 86 ball control to get tier three drill moves and momentum animations so that's basically kind of the same this year i wonder what the other caps are if it's 70 75 for tier two or something else you know what i'm saying but they did rename these these were called pro and elite dribble moves now they're called like they're like in tiers this year um ipod king carter said let's address dribbling Players won't play the same unless YouTubers give them P 
people a stick by stick tutorial combos are done by one on one movements has escapes will be a big factor in dribbling as well what's it called davis also said that dribbling got a complete revamp so obviously these youtubers and streamers are noticing that the dribbling is completely different sub the gamer said my favorite part about 2k20 is the player's ability to change pace you get them with that pullback, and if they reach, you can sweep past them like that. Anything. It's such a fast act, but the game actually makes the animation slow enough for you to be like, oh my goodness. So, I don't know. It's looking like dribblers are looking pretty good in 2K20. Shakedown says there are different contextual styles to every dribbler. Some players can split the defense, and some will blow by the defenders. Some can stop on a dime. Others can accelerate for a dump. Taller point forwards will have less dribble style options. So obviously we said point forwards aren't in the game. So what he means by that is just taller dribblers. So 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", 6'8", right? Um, but dribbling, you know, there's... I like how they're talking about dribbling. There's just a lot more options and a lot more style. So it's not just like bland, like, oh, just a playmaker. Maybe it's like, you know, a guy that can blow by, like he said. Or a guy that can stop on a dime and shoot. Or, you know, explode and get a blow by, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of like that. I think that's a lot more versatile and a lot more specific when it comes to playmakers. Uh, he also said that dribble fatigue takes after effect very quickly. I had handles for days on Hall of Fame. So if you guys don't know, that's the stamina dribbling uh, badge. And he said he had it on Hall of Fame and still couldn't spam drill moves. Dribbling is going to take practice. The good 2K players will appear more unique and separate themselves from the copycats. So, this is huge. You can't just spam dribble moves. You know, when, and I like this. The dribblers are going to have to dribble to get open instead of dribbling to dribble. So, once they get open, they have to take advantage. And if they don't make that split-second decision correctly, then they're going to be out of stamina and they're going to be locked down, which I like that. It's going to take... You know, it's gonna be it's gonna take skill to be a playmaker, but it's gonna be rewarding to be a playmaker at the same time. Now, this is not good. I don't like this, but it also is kind of good at the same time. Hollywood said post speed boosting is still in the game, but just talked with at Baluba, showed him how to do it. Now, Baluba obviously, as you can see from this tweet, didn't know it was in the game, and Hollywood told him how to do it. So maybe they're gonna patch it. Hopefully, I don't know, but I don't think it should be in the game. It was in 2K19. It was very overpowered. But we will see, man. We will see. Uh, Shakedown also said the quick first step batch is incredible. The momentum behind the back is slower and drains a lot of stamina. Momentum spin didn't seem as glitchy or rarely worked. Snatchbacks and stepbacks for jumpers still create space and break ankles. So basically kind of the same for 19 when it comes to snatchbacks and stepbacks. But uh, stamina is huge. So once again, that split second decision is going to be huge. But the quick first step badge... You know makes it a little easier so obviously he thinks that badge is very important unlike the handles for days badge that he was talking about but anyways enough about the dribbling man let's get into more of the takeover system which is very different from 2k19 in my opinion craig announced that there's actually a completely new takeover in nba 2k20 which is crazy to think about i don't we don't know what the takeover is but I could I don't know I could not I cannot think of what a new takeover could be. We have shock rating, defending, post scoring, shooting. We have takeover for dribbling, uh, dunking. I don't know what. Comment down below in the comment section what kind of takeover you guys think is going to be added to 2K20 because apparently there's going to be one that is going to be added. Shakedown said there is no double takeover. You choose which takeover you want to have activated before you play. It can be changed my player editor. So you can change from sharp, slashing, playmaking type. I chose the playmaking takeover one game and slashing the next. So that was his build. He had like a play sharp slashing build. And he chose he could chose out of the three he could choose out of those three of those takeovers and he was choosing different ones in different games. Now I think this is huge. So it's almost gonna be like a jump shot. You equip your takeover. Now I don't know if you're gonna be able to equip these takeovers and change these takeovers like just on the spot or during a win streak or you have to hop off or something. You know what I'm saying? But I like this. So there's no double takeover. Now you can have like three takeovers, right? But you can only have one takeover in a game. You can't, you know, have multiple takeovers. So you can't have sharp and lock takeover during the game. You can only pick one. And I like that. Now hopefully you can change these between games so you can change them to based on matchups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think that is a good thing. You know, that lowers the the you know, OP-ness, I guess, of TakeOver, but I don't know. I like that. 
Um, Frank also said you could choose your own takeover. Apparently, you can be a shot creator with sharp takeover. Now, thank God that Juice confirmed this. He said, yeah, but the attributes have to be certain for takeover to be options. Now, thank God, because if I'm a pure, if I'm a pure playmaker with sharp takeover, say goodbye, okay? Um, or maybe, like, a pure glass cleaner with sharp takeover. Like, I don't know. That would be crazy to me. And Duke Dennis also said that as a stretch big, once you get past 610, you can only choose sharp and takeover. Now, this is good and bad. I wanted to be more of a defending sharp take, you know, kind of stretch. But I can't be that anymore because apparently this. But Joe Knows kind of commented on this and said, oh, so I can be a stretch, get takeover, and then work him in the post. GG. Which is kind of true. Like, what it... What if I'm going crazy, I max out my shooting, I have the post and sharp takeover, but I have the post equipped? Oh, I hit three threes, and now I got post score takeover and go crazy, but I don't know. We'll see how that works. That could be like a meta in 2K20, but we'll see. They're, they're really trying to tune down the searches, y'all. I'm not going to lie. Um, Annoying TV said takeover activated on its own in this build. I don't know how retail it is, but I think... That's pretty dope. So I guess TakeOver activates on its own and you can't activate it itself based on builds. I'm not sure what he meant by this. Maybe certain builds it activates by itself. I really don't know what he is saying by that one. But um, Shakedown said uh, the first build I made at the My Player Builder was a playmaking primary slasher, secondary, and had shooting as a third ability. I had three TakeOver choices. My player could dribble slash and I gave him gold shooting badges. That was... I don't know. This, this is explaining a lot about how you build your player in 2k20 and i really like it i'm not gonna lie that build is looking versatile i think versatile and versatility is gonna be the best especially once you get to a high overall and instead of just making you know a one-sided build that can like only shoot or only defend right and that's at least what i'm getting at with uh what these guys are talking about here that actually played the game but anyways let's go into the final thing and that is gameplay now to be honest, I wouldn't, you know, worry about most of these gameplay tweets that are going out because, first of all, these guys were all playing on all-star difficulty, and second, you know, it's day, it, the game hasn't even launched yet, right? So, we don't know, you know, what it's going to be like when we, when everybody gets their hands on it, right? Um, but anyways, Duke Dennis said, blow buys are a problem. Now, that is not looking good. Um, it's looking good for slashers and athletic finishers and guys that want to drive to the rack and, you know, maybe ISO players that want to, you know, rim run all day. But this was in 2K18 and it really ruined the game, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Easy Breezy said the contest system is low-key fire. Now, as y'all know, there's like coverage systems and stuff, but apparently it works well and it tells you really if you're playing good defense or not. Uh, Goot, or what's it called? Annoying TV said new flash green and green releases too. Now we did see a little of this and basically it's just like, oh, you want a spark animation when you hit a green or do you want like a flash animation? There's just different kind of visual animations you can get when you hit a green. Nothing big, but hashtag NBA 2A20 is an inside game if I'm going to be 100%. Now, I don't like this as much because the inside scoring was ridiculous. Inside defense was broken. Now, hopefully, I mean... I don't know. I really think this might be the best year for slashes and athletic finishers and people that drive to the basket, like I was saying earlier, with all the gameplay news we're hearing. But I don't know. We'll see, man. We'll see. Um, Shakedown said, I wasn't able to blitz the ball handler at the perfect angle to knock the ball loose. Only time I got steals was against bad dribblers or in the passing lanes. Good defenders could slow down blow buys. Pure sharps needed serious help for slashers. Now, I like this because he's really, you know giving us the fact that there's going to be a lot of mismatches sharps aren't going to be able to guard these slashers and um only good defenders are going to be be able to slow down the blow buys so i don't know it's kind of showing a skill gap and also a mismatch um when it comes to builds so i don't know i kind of like that but i don't know about this driving stuff man it's looking a little overpowered Annoying TV said that there's a meta in every game. True, but that there's only a balance to 20. That will shorten the metas. 19 meta would have kind of short too. It was either play sharp or shot maker last year. This year, who knows? Once again, all the builds are crazy. We have no idea what the meta is going to be. It could, there could be tons and tons of metas, but we have no clue as it is right now. So the gamer says post risers in this game are incredible. Oh my god. Once again, another slashing thing that's come up when it comes to gameplay. Um, they 
definitely did add a lot of more, more post rising animations maybe that's what he's talking about here but oh my god am i excited to get my hands on this game because i might make something in my build slash and i'm not gonna lie annoying tv says no more lying on greens it's visible to everyone so if your teammate keeps saying oh i lagged no bar no bar and he really full barred and missed you'll be able to see and he's not gonna be able to lie about his releases anymore because everybody on the court defense and offense will be able to see your bar when you shoot it and when you get that green or you get that half bar you know what i'm saying i really like this this should have been had they should have been had this in the game i'm not gonna lie now this was deleted by zach but he did say that just saw the micro trailer the neighborhood looked like the same thing in 2k20 i don't think he was supposed to tweet this but it was deleted i don't know if it's true a lot of people are saying there's a different neighborhood i really can't confirm if this is correct or not but we will see come 2k20 there is a micro trailer coming this monday so if that's what he's talking about and this is true we will see that this coming monday so the gamer said a lot of skill involved in this game man you make one slip up you will regret it competitive play is at an all-time high so i really think that the most things he's talking about right here is defense and dribbling and getting open and when you're open taking the shot i love this if there's a skill gap in this game it's gonna be a good game except for that one shooting badge we talked about earlier but this is good news right here skill gap is always good that's what we want a big skill gap he also said this year when trying to steal the spam button instead of you always just getting the foul call it felt like the ball handler gets an advantage and can drive past you love this now this means lockdowns and the people that are going to try to play defense are actually going to have skill instead of just spamming your freaking x button until it breaks you're actually going to have to click x at a certain time or if you do spam it too much oh i'm going right past you and i'm getting that easy too simple as that but uh, i like that for sure duke dennis said i've been playing hashtag 2k20 for hours and hard to say but guard is fun to play centers are mad slow and there are some things to fix but overall it's different which is good we want a different 2k we want something that's completely different it's been similar between the years you know the last three or four years it's always similar but this year it's completely different i like how centers are slower guards can get that mismatch going which is just how it like it is real life if steph curry if andrew bogut switch on to, to steph curry steph curry's gonna cook him up you know what i'm saying just like it should be in the game um but he did say guards are fun and they're looking fun too based on the news not gonna lie to y'all i'm david said guards are significantly faster than centers one-on-one -on -one matchups just like we were talking about right there that's exactly how it should be uh something gamer said wow speed is huge for 2k20 players who can switch from slow to fast will be rewarded so epic once again these playmakers the guys that can make the right decisions um skill gap is just gonna be huge this year hollywood said steel success is at an old time high just play with uh, annoying tv and mike wang and wow i was stealing with easy might not need a defensive build this year this is low-key good but once again they are playing on all-star difficulty and now you're probably thinking oh the lock is going to be op why would the lock be op if steel success is good that means anybody can steal the ball you don't need to be a lockdown come on now duke dennis said stretch big still shoot over those thank god because apparently they're slow as shit they need to be able to do something um he also said that he made a seven foot stretch big with hall of fame catch and shoot hall of fame range cons extender which is limitless range this year and he made a fade for away from three from deep also was able to pick up the quick first step badge on his stretch which makes him a little faster but he said he's still slow um so yeah basically that is it when it comes to gameplay they are trying to nerf stretches trying to make playmakers more valuable guards and short players more valuable on the court which is good because height has always had an advantage in this game added a lot of badges a lot of ways to customize your build and there you go that's everything we know about nba 2k20 this was a long video but it was a lot to talk about so make sure you guys smash the like button on the video for all the new news drop a sub if you're new to the channel and comment down below what is the biggest takeaway you've gotten from the community today in nba 2k20 we are so close to the demo which is coming out august 21st in six day in six days and then we got the official launch day on september 6th if you're ready let me know in the comments it's been your boy henry aka double hdf and i'm out of here man peace I ain't never had no friends, I was all alone She ain't never called my phone, she left me on my own They saying all girls are the same, proud that they're my thumb She said, can you stay with me? No, I gotta go Diamond dripping off my neck, is wet I'm about to flex up on my